So I've been using the Galaxy Z Fold 4 every single day for 9 months now, since August 24... August 25th, so just about 9 months. And even though I've been reviewing the Pixel 7 Pro, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Galaxy S23 Ultra most recently, and have been daily driving those phones authentically so that way I can give you guys a well-rounded review, this has never left my pocket. I'd still bring it with me absolutely everywhere. And over these last nine months, using it alongside those other devices, I've grown to love this more and also grown to see some of the annoyances that come with a form factor like this. So genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, as someone that loves the phone, I'm gonna be as objective as possible with you guys. If you guys are looking at buying this phone, you have a well-rounded perspective. One of my biggest gripes with the phone actually has to do with the inside display. It has nothing to do with the crease, because honestly, 99% of the time when you're using this phone, you're not gonna see it. You're just gonna see the big, beautiful display. However, you're going to notice dust and fuzzies. And a decent amount of the time, what you end up having to do is you crack it open and you go, Give it a nice little blow. Uh, phrasing. One of the biggest reasons I love the phone is because of the inside display. And in my personal experience, I find that the benefits of this display, that it's big, beautiful, responsive, and detailed, outweigh getting fuzzies inside your display, even if you have it folded up and you throw it in your pocket, or sometimes you'll have it open and you'll notice like, fuzzies materializing from the ether somewhere and falling onto your screen. I have dropped this phone four more times than I wish I had. Can't even say it's because it's a clumsy phone to wield. I've just had like really bad luck with dropping this way more than like any of my other devices. Despite all the dings in the Nix, the phone works perfectly fine. The hinge, I would expect to have some problems flexing back and forth because of the number of times that I've dropped this bad boy, but it's good. It's great, you can still keep it in that flexi Z mode, which is perfectly fine. Sometimes you will get a little bit of a... I've been told it's because of the film on the display, and I'm someone that I do not want to remove that film because I don't want to scratch like the actual screen of the device. I use the inner display a lot, and I don't have any like scratches or abrasions or anything like that on the inside. One of the points of contention for the Fold series is the outside display, right? Sort of like that candy bar sort of setup. If you ask me, I actually find this to be so useful on a day-to-day -day basis whenever I'm texting, say, clients or family members, when I'm browsing the internet like Reddit or on Twitter or something like that. Reaching the top shelf of the phone is not a problem. My thumb can easily reach every corner of the phone. And additionally, because the fingerprint sensor has a swipe function that allows you to control the notification sheet the front display experience is so pleasant and i actually use this front display way more than you might suspect from someone who uses a phone like this because i don't feel like i'm being punished for using the front display it's very comprehensive it's easy to use but if you're worried about like this front display even months later i can genuinely say that it has not been a hassle <music> In my previous Fold 4 videos, I talk a lot about how I use the Fold 4 to complement my work lifestyle, right? Like using Adobe Acrobat, for example, and signing um, paperwork and clinical notes for the clients that I'm working with, confidentiality papers and things like that. I actually stumbled upon a different application that might be helpful for a lot of you guys. It's called UPDF. And UPDF is great because it has a permanent purchasing function, unlike Adobe Acrobat that hides a lot of things behind the paywall. And you can never actually just own full rights and access on your account. You have to constantly renew either monthly or yearly. UPDF, you're able to actually just buy it outright and have access to a host of different things. You can edit, annotate, organize your PDFs. For me personally, being able to sign within the sheets is really helpful. You can convert your PDFs to different file formats. And what's really nice is that for someone like me that has a Galaxy Fold 4, but also has an iPad and a MacBook and also a Windows uh, laptop, no matter what operating system you're on, you can use PDF to live sync everything. PDF did reach out to me, but if I didn't think that their product was worth talking about, I wouldn't have spent my time talking about it. But for those of you guys looking for an alternative to something like Adobe Acrobat, I think it's awesome. If you guys use my link in the comment section down below, you guys can get 54% off of your purchase. 
using it alongside like the S23 Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and the Pixel 7 Pro in a number of ways, I see where those phones shine over the Z Fold 4, right? So one of those being like the camera, we'll talk about that a bit later. For a large number of people, that solid glass slab feel is going to be better in the hand ergonomically than the candy bar screen. One of the primary reasons that this has not left my side, even when using those other phones as daily drivers, is the screen is just incredibly difficult to be. I respond to emails for both my clinical work and also with different brands and companies for YouTube on this phone. When I'm responding in YouTube studio to you guys' comments, 98% of the time I'm doing it on the Galaxy Z Fold 4 because it's just so easy to crack open and have a mini tablet at my disposal when I'm watching a YouTube video or playing any single, any game at all. Punishing Grey Raven's amazing, Genshin Impact is amazing, that new game Honkai Star Rail. Man, that game is a lot of fun. If you guys are playing that, let me know in the comment section down below. That game's a blast. Everything on this phone is just, to me personally, a much more enjoyable, immersive experience because of this larger form factor. If you're enjoying the video, finding it helpful, and want to join me on this YouTube journey, the subscribe button and the thumbs up go a long way to helping me. In these videos, I usually have you guys give me like an eggplant or a cucumber to show me that like you're digging the phone. This time, Peach. There's not a single thing that I do on like a Galaxy S23 Ultra or an iPhone 14 Pro Max or the 7 Pro or any other phone that I don't do on this larger display and don't enjoy it more and enjoy the experience more. I don't know, I kind of sound like I'm in love, right? Like you would think the honeymoon phase would kind of like wear out, but no man, uh, this, this display, it's the bee's knees and it has my heart. When looking at the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the S23 Ultra, those comparison videos, right? And looking at how like those phones are battery champions. Those things will last you all day. In my previous videos, I break down like an average work day during my week in terms of like contacting clients and case management and like working on treatment plans, etc. And how both of those phones without fail can get me through the entire day. I love the Z Fold 4 but it's not gonna quite get you throughout the entire day, right? For me, this isn't a huge problem because I know I'm able to get to a charger at basically any point in the day that I need to to top this up, right? Getting around like six and a half hours worth of screen on time on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the 23 Ultra, they're gonna get you all day. That is something I hope can be improved on in the Galaxy Z Fold 5, but right now, the way that my life is structured, it's not too much of a nuisance because I know I can top up quickly and efficiently throughout the day and with the fast charging, I'm not really experiencing a problem. Is it less convenient? Objectively, yes. But is it a is it problematic in my life at the moment? I would say no. I will acknowledge though that the Fold 4 is really great at taking pictures with like the primary camera, the 50 megapixel mode, and even portrait shots and the macro look really great. You start to get some diminishing returns on the ultra wide pictures, um, depending on like the lighting that you have. And I can't lie, man, like on the S23 Ultra and like the Pixel 7 Pro and to some extent the iPhone, I really, really miss having like a super capable zoom lens on a phone like this. Um, it's something that I do wish that was on here. Hopefully that could be on the Fold five it'll make it more expensive but that's just my two cents but i'll let you guys decide what you think Yeah, so just um, about yeah, 50 fine. minutes. We're almost local. So. Yeah. yeah, almost, almost. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. I, I, had a, uh, I had a girlfriend from Cherry Hill many years ago. Okay. okay. 
If you guys have enjoyed the video to this point, found it helpful, and want to join me on this YouTube journey, I'm definitely in this for the long haul. Uh, hitting the subscribe button is the best way to do so. Um, let me know in the comment section if you guys are going to pull the trigger on a Fold 4 or if you want to hold off for the Fold 5. I'm super excited for that and the Pixel Fold. Um, but outside of that, have a fantastic remainder of your day. Thanks again so much for joining me. And as always, peace, love, and adios. Thank you.